So today I get to talk to Jordan Murphy and Jordan, I, I um, am interviewing all three Murphys today. So this is an exciting day for me. Yes. Um, I'm going to probably release all three of your videos at the same time, just because, you know, give the people what they want. Right, exactly. <laughs> the, tr the trilogy that we all needed. Yes. <laughs> there was the Tiger King and now yes. the Murphys are going to get us through May, right? Exactly. Okay. Well, thank you for being with me today. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to sharing with my students. So I'd like to just start out with you sharing a little bit about your high school experience, what you graduated, and you know what you were involved in. Okay, um, I graduated from Marion High School in 2012. I was a cheerleader for all four years. I was on the charter bass fishing team. Yeah. Um, I was in National Honor Society, National Art Honor Society, National Spanish Honor Society. I was in FBLA. Yes. I, um, I actually got to go to nationals with FBLA. So that's yes. definitely one of the highlights for my high school career. Um, I was in student council. I was vice president of my class. Um, I was in UNO club. Yeah, so. there's no UNO club anymore. Oh, dang, that was such a good club. I know. Oh. Sadly, UNO's no more. Yeah. Wow. They were they were um, influential here, you know. So it's sad. Yeah, to, yeah, exactly. So, and um, what year did you graduate? Did you say that? And I missed it. 2012. Yes. Okay. 2012. So, so 2012, you graduate from Marion High School, and we did have a lot of fun in FBLA, that is for sure, and I, I love taking kids to nationals. Mm -hmm. It's just, it was an awesome experience. But so from there to where you are today, would you mind to just share with my students your career path? Sure, absolutely. Um, graduating high school, I didn't necessarily want to go to college. I wanted to go to an art school. I was extremely involved in art while I was in high school, and I wanted to go to an art school. And I was like, no, I'm not going, I'm not going to college. That's not what I want to do. And mom and dad were both like, hmm, you need to go. You need to get your general studies out of the way, and then you can go wherever you want. That way, that if something doesn't work out, then you can come back and get your degree. Yeah. Well, I decided to go to SEMO, and I started studying fashion merchandising. And I absolutely loved it. Um, I majored in fashion merchandising. I got my degree in fashion merchandising with a minor in entrepreneurship. And my parents had already moved to New Madrid. And so I was looking for jobs with that. And I found a job with University of Missouri. Cool. And so I started working with University of Missouri. And uh, they placed you into low-income um, counties. Mm -hmm. and low-income schools and I was a college advisor in a high school okay and so I got to be involved in the college access process and that's where I really started to love education I was always interested in education because obviously that's what my dad did that's what I was around all the time but yeah I didn't think it was necessarily a path for me and then I got into the high school that I was working in and I fell in love with it I was obsessed with the college access, the college program, and getting to work with all of these admission specialists all over the state. And we were really focused on finding the best fit, best match institution for these students. And they're students that are first generation, that are low income, that don't necessarily have the resources available to them to find a yeah. college. So that's what I did for two years. And then I started working on getting my education degree. And so I got certified to teach um, six through 12 science. And I, I loved my biology classes while I was at Marion. I absolutely, those were my favorite classes. Miss Rice was great. Yes. Um, and so I got certified to teach that. And then there was a position open at New Madrid for elementary. And so I got my elementary certification and I am now teaching fifth grade for New Madrid Elementary, and I'm working on my master's in um, educational school counseling psychology. Okay, so you would like to transition into school counseling? Hopefully. Well, that makes sense with your experience mm -hmm. uh, for the two years, you know, with the University of Missouri, that you would right. hear that up. That, I that really, that's something that I really miss is the college access part of education. Yes. 
You know, this is cool because I, I knew none of this because uh, I don't know. I can't find you on social media. I don't know if you're, in- I don't have it. I only have Instagram. <laughs> okay. See, I'll, I'll find you. But anyway, yeah. so I, I really didn't know what you were doing right now. I was just like, Hey, it'll be good to catch up. But I am right now um, working in a design group with Georgetown university on um, helping build a teacher network that will assist in undermatched students and helping them get to college. So whether the barrier is income level or, you know, just geographic things or whatever, you know, whatever um, biases might be in the application, stuff like that. So this is really cool. That's, that's basically what we did. I mean, we helped students come overcome those barriers. Well, we're going to have to stay in communication then because yeah, absolutely. we just started that process um, this week was the, well, last week was the first week of meetings. Um, we've been doing them all remotely, but anyway, really cool. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so, so yeah, I can, I can see you doing that. So, um, I mean, now there are school counselors at all levels, but it sounds like you would kind of like to work your way into a high school setting. As much as I love elementary mm-hmm. I really miss that college access and I miss like I was doing a lot with like the NCAA clearinghouse uh-huh. and getting those athletes ready to go play division one or two ball uh-huh. and so I kind of miss that aspect of it too yeah. and I just I miss the high school level yeah for sure well that's really exciting so um so what do you think what skill sets are most important for someone that is interested, I don't know if you want to talk about, you know, teaching at the elementary level or like the counseling side of things, but whatever you think is important for students to know, uh, what skill sets do you think are important? I think it both for counseling and being in the classroom, I think you have to be able to build those relationships. And that's a skill set that you really need to learn is how to listen. Um, you have to be able to talk to your students. You have to be able to talk to whoever comes in your office or whoever is trying to talk to you because they have lives too. And it's not just about you. So you have to build those relationships and you have to be able to talk to them. And so that was something that I had to learn too was, okay, sit back, let them talk. Don't necessarily try to give your advice or, Hey, this is what I did. And I know coming from Marion, we had a lot of opportunity. Our school was fantastic for what we were able to do. And I hope that's something that all of the kids now are taking advantage of is it's, we had such great opportunities and living in New Madrid and living in where I lived before, those schools didn't have those opportunities. Mm -hmm. So use what you have to your advantage because you need to learn skills and you need to be creative with how you learn skills if you don't have those opportunities. Absolutely. Um, and, and one, I mean, one beautiful thing about the, the age that we live in is there's so much information available that, you know, students can access if they have internet, which is all is an issue for me personally in my own home to be able to get reliable an internet provider. But if they have access to internet, which most schools do have, uh, there are lots of opportunities to do research. You can do virtual campus tours. You know, you can learn about careers in a way that um, wouldn't have been available, you know, a decade ago, you know, right. 10 or 15 years ago. So you're right, but you just have to be proactive. Mm-hmm. Um, and definitely take advantage here in Marion of the resources that we do have and try the different classes to see what you like and what you're passionate about. Well, and that's something that, I was so blown away by because I didn't necessarily understand that other schools didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And I was working in schools where their whole entire school size was the size of our class. Mm -hmm. So we had such amazing classes. Mm -hmm. I mean, the art classes that we had, the business classes, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing that even touches those two programs at any other school. And even our English classes, how many English classes did we have? Mm -hmm. In foreign language. I mean, yes. And by the way, just a little uh, shout out to Miss Beth Wilson, who is retiring this year. Is she really? Yes. And I know that how much she meant to you and so many through our building. And I hate that she is not getting the, you know, the, the end of the year that you like to have when you, you you know, so anyway, I know 
<laughs> you're just one of many students that was influenced by by her. Because of Miss Wilson, I got to go to New York. I got my dress. At, I got the National Scholastic Art Award, and it was because of Miss Wilson. There I you mean, go. Right. Yeah. So I, I think you're right, and I think it's good for our students to hear uh, that not everyone, you know, because we're kind of used to it around here. You know, like, oh my goodness, I can't decide what classes to take because there are so many. Mm -hmm. But I don't think everyone has that opportunity. So you know, use it wisely, I guess. Well, and I'm always surprised by our AP course load that we have. Mm -hmm. I was talking to my seniors when I was in Kennett and I was like, you guys don't have AP <laughs> student <of> art? <laughs> like that's what I, like you guys don't have AP government or whatever it was, like they didn't have those courses. They're like, well, no, we only have two AP classes that we can choose from. Yeah. And so the kids that are graduating from Marion are already put at such an advantage because they've had those courses and they've had those dual credit classes that are available to them and why not take them while they're free? Absolutely, absolutely. So I feel like we have really walked right into the advice that you would have for students. Um, um, but is there, is there anything else on the advice side you would like to tell students? And then I'm gonna circle back on a question I kind of missed, so. Okay, um, working with admission officers, and which I'm bringing this back to college access. That's right. <laughs> But working with admission officers and everything that I know about college admissions, it's not necessarily about just about your grades anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just about your ACT because a lot of schools are super scoring now. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about those things. It's about what you can get involved in outside of school and inside of school. So it's the clubs that you choose to participate in. It's the activities that you're doing outside of school, youth outreach, any kind of outreach that you can do is always looked upon because they're looking at the whole student more now because everybody is so competitive. Mm -hmm. So, and that was something that I was surprised by because I mean, we were at Wash U, we were at SLU, we were at these very competitive schools and they're like, well, we're not just looking at the ACT. We're not just looking at their grades. I mean, you have to have obviously great grades and ACT, but they want you to be involved. So my advice would be find balance between not just worrying about your grades, but also being involved. Get involved in sports that you maybe weren't interested in. I played soccer for a year. I was terrible, but I tried it. So, I mean, it happens. There are lessons to learn. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, just find balance between your grades and what you're doing in the community. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I meant to ask you about like a day in the life. So, what, I mean, I feel like a students feel like they know like what a teacher does because they see that but if you even want to talk again on the, the the counseling side or the admission side like what does a day in the life look like for someone who does that that career whichever way you'd like to take it okay i can do both if you'd like yeah that'd be great okay um when i was counseling i'd get to school and then i'd start with my first student and i had to meet with all the seniors all of the juniors and i met with those recursively. So I was meeting them constantly. Um, my freshmen and sophomores I met with, and I had to meet with their entire class, but it wasn't necessarily as often as the juniors and seniors. Exactly. Uh, with my seniors, we were making, we were looking at their transcripts and we were looking at um, their ACT scores and seeing it, what schools they fit with and matched with. And we were constantly doing FAFSAs. I mean, I spent two years filling out probably 5,000 FAFSAs. Mm -hmm. um, that was something that I did almost every single day. I was on the phone with either FAFSA or with a college, and I was trying to get these kids into these schools. I, read a, I wrote a lot of recommendation letters um, based on the student that I was seeing. Um, I also got to plan college events. So we did a lot of campus tours and mm -hmm. um, we got to go to Ole Miss. We got to go to Mississippi State and um, we went to SIU, we went to SEMO, Arkansas State. Uh, we got to do a lot of really fun campus cool. tours and that wasn't necessarily every day, but that was at least yeah. once a month, I'd say. But then we got to, I did a lot of NCAA Clearinghouse and that was, it depended on the season of course, because the athletes that were in season needed to make sure that they were meeting the requirements. I did, a, there were a lot of phone calls. I mean, a lot of it is just grunt work. You're just 
calling parents, you're calling the students if they're not at school and you're trying to get them to school so they can do something. Um, but I mean, obviously you're calling the parents. Um, and then working with the counselors that were already in the school side by side, making sure that they're doing what they need to be doing, the students are doing what they need to be doing for their classwork. I mean, it was just a lot of tedious little things, tedious things that you had to get done so that they could move on. And then there were the times where the students just needed to talk. So they're stressed out because of the college access or the college going system. They're stressed out and they're going through stuff at home and they just need to come in and sit down in your office and be like, listen, I worked until two o'clock this morning. I'm having to pay my bills. Like, I'm, I just need to talk. And then you have to be that person. It's like, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so that was, that was something that I wasn't necessarily expecting. And I guess that comes from, I'm not sure where it comes from, but work being in a community that's so impoverished that the kids are working until two or three in the yeah. morning. And I'm sure that's going on in Marion too. Oh. But so that's just hard for to hear as an adult and you're not having to work those hours and these kids are coming in and being like well i'm having to pay my light bill and if i don't then it's they're gonna get shut off mm -hmm. and then as a teacher they strings, you know i mean absolutely i have dealt in the last i don't know probably three years just the level of number of students that are homeless has i've just yes. you know that's been an issue um to to work with so yeah I can't, I can't count the number of times that like after the student left that i've cried that i'm just so heartbroken that i can't do anything like there's nothing physically that i can do and it's just so heartbreaking like you can give them the resources that they need and but i mean it just breaks your heart yeah but yeah you're going back for more right exactly <laughs> <laughs> always <laughs> um, that's, in, how, that's what we do <laughs> yeah Exactly. In the classroom, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. It's just different. Um, last year, I was only teaching science and reading. And this year, I'm teaching all four subjects. So I've got science, reading, math, and social studies. Uh -huh. And this, it was a little bit more difficult this year. Um, my math skills are not exactly where they need to be. And fifth grade math was kind of, I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't remember how to do that, Mr. Stettel. I didn't even know about fifth graders. <laughs> That's the thing is, like, I had a couple kids in my class that were like, mm, Miss Jordan, <laughs> that one's not right. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, hold on. I'm sorry. Let me rework it out. <laughs> Let me go over here and write it out. My kids catch math there. Like, mine are simple math there. It's like on the board all the time. I'll be doing, so, especially in accounting. And even on a study guide I put out the other day remotely, one of my kids texted me, I'm like, Ms. Hutchins, I'm pretty sure you added wrong on one of your yeah. slides. I'm like, oh, you're right. Like, I, did, I posted a video and I had to send out a follow-up message like, hey, problem one, mm, there's a math error. Exactly. <laughs> if I didn't have a couple of those kids that were like, Miss mm, Jordan, <laughs> I'd probably have taught the whole lessons wrong. I mean, it's, but math is math has definitely been the most difficult part of mm -hmm. my job um we don't we are getting a new science curriculum this year which i'm excited for uh but we haven't had a science curriculum in the past couple of years so i've had to build that by myself so that was difficult as well um, yeah. building those lesson plans around what you're wanting to do as well as staying with the standards yeah but it's amazing what happens when you tell your students i'm sorry that when you do yeah. teach something wrong and you tell them and they're like wait what You're i think it's, we talked about in some of our other um sessions like i think it's important for kids to not be afraid to fail and right. one of the most pure things a teacher can do is not intentionally make mistakes but we're gonna make them and if we just admit oh like you, oh i made a mistake you're right but you know bounce back from it and go on and kids right. need to learn that too that that's okay Absolutely. I definitely agree with that, that there's certain times where I make mistakes and they're like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. You can just come back and do it again. And I'm like, oh, thank you guys. <laughs> My little 10 year olds are <laughs> more mature than I am. Well, that is really cool. I am, um, I'm just so, I'm, I'm so excited to hear about what you've been doing and now what you're, you know, continuing to do. Um, 
it's it's been really great to catch up with you. Yes, absolutely. And we definitely need to keep talking. I'm going to, yes. um, I want to talk to you more about what you did with the University of Missouri and um, the the matching stuff that you were doing. That's really absolutely. Well, and that's how I'm getting my master's through, so I still have all those contacts and everything. Awesome. So just let me know. All right. Well, thank you so much. I know thank my you. students are going to enjoy this. Well, hopefully they enjoy Jesse and Gabe, too. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. You. Well, now it's, it's a contest. We'll take a vote after. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just make sure it sway a little bit towards me. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.